Hi guys, welcome to the next section, Recurring Neural Networks. In this section, we will set up a basic recurring neural network. We will then set up bidirectional RNN model and deep RNN model. Finally, we will see how to set up long short-term memory based sequence model. Now we move on to the first video of this section that deals with setting up a basic recurrent neural network. In this video, we are going to take a look at different steps to set up an RNN model. Recurrent neural networks are used for sequential modeling on data sets where high autocorrelation exists among observations. For example, predicting patient journeys using data set or predicting the next words in given sentences. The main commonality among these problem statements is that input length is not constant and there is a sequential dependence. Standard neural network and deep learning models are constrained by fixed size input and produce a fixed length output. Deep learning neural networks built on occupancy data sets have six input features and a binomial outcome. Generative models in machine learning domains are referred to as models that have an ability to generate observable data values. For example, training a generative model on images repository to generate new images like it. All generative models aim to compute the joint distribution over given data sets, either implicitly or explicitly. Now let's see the steps to set up a RNN model. First, we will load the required packages. Next, we will load MNIST dataset using this command. After that, we define a function to plot the MNIST dataset. We will then reduce the image size to 16 into 16 pixels using the reduce image function. The line of code converts the trained data to 16 into 16 pixel image. Let's extract the labels for the defined train and valid datasets. We reset the graph and start an interactive session. Now we will define model parameters such as size of input pixels, step size, number of hidden layers, and number of outcome classes. Next we will define the training parameters such as learning rate as 0.01, number of inputs per patch run, and number of iterations as 100. After that we define a function RNN that takes in batch input dataset, weight matrix, and bias vector, and returns a final outcome predicted vector of a most basic RNN. We unstack the input into step size using this command. We then define the most basic RNN. Here we create a recurrent neural network. Next line of code will activate linear using the RNN inner loop. Now we define a function to evaluate the mean accuracy using the actual and predicted label. We have this command for count correct solution and the next line of code calculate the mean accuracy. We will define a placeholder variables x and y and initialize weight matrix and bias vector using this code snippet. These lines of code define the placeholder for input data. Next we define the weight of the bias. Let's generate the predicted labels where we evaluate the RNN outputs using this code. Next we will define the loss function and the optimizer. Now we will run the optimization post initializing session using the global variables initializer using this code snippet. We reshape the sample data into 16 sequence with each 16 elements. Finally, we get the mean accuracy for 128 MNIST test images on valid data using these lines of code. Let's see how it works. RNN architecture helps to address the issue of variable input length. This diagram shows standard architecture for RNN with input and output. The RNN architecture can be formulated like this, where H base to T is state at time per index T and is input at time per index T. The matrix W represents weights to connect hidden nodes and S connects input with the hidden layer. The output node at time per index T is related to state H Based to T, weights remain constant across state and time. In this video, we have set up a basic recurrent neural network. 